all women will say they love their children more than anything in the world, more than life itself. This is what's said constantly. And I'm going to pose a question to you. The question is, ladies, you say you love your children or do anything for them. I've looked. I've seen the dating statistics for the single mothers out there. They'll say, look, I've got children. I can't blame them. They love their children. I come as a package deal for you men out there. Step up. Father, step up. Take on this challenge of me and my children. Love them. Take us. We're a package solution. My child comes before anything else. If you don't like it, step out. Okay. If you love your children and you say you'll do anything for them, my question and thought experiment today is, well, then will you do anything for your children? Let's see after I pose the solution. Men, get back to you. When I pose this solution, if you act emotionally, I got some words for you. Will you take back your burden of masculinity? Yeah, you've, you've, you've shifted it. You've shifted it legally. You've shifted it morally. And you've shifted it from what your evolutionary desires and instincts have brought you. So let's talk about it. You know, one thing that we could do that we could take action on after I identify the problem for you. And you're going to know if you do this thought experiment correctly. And when I say correctly, just calm down, take a breath, think about it tomorrow, sleep on it, look around you and look at the corollary evidence around you. Look at the people, you know, think about it. Don't think about the exceptions. Think about it generally you'll actually come to the very same conclusion. It's taken me many, many decades to do this because, of course, just like you, I've been saddled with all the same propaganda and all the same thoughts. And now that I have this experience and this knowledge and having consulted very, very loving people that face these problems, the solution for me becomes very, very apparent and something that we could actually do in our society. My question is, do we have the courage to do it? Primary custody is given to one of the parents. And in this case, 90% of the time to the mothers. And that means that the father has the right to every other weekend and one night with the children. That's his visitation. Even though he has legal 50-50 coverage or custody that primary custody does not reside with him. This is how it's been since 1970, as we're looking here. And now this creates a whole host of problems, whole host of problems. Here we go, Thor. What is the solution? Well, I'll tell you guys, there's this book written, and no, it's not the book of Odin, it was another book that came much later, called the Bible. Bible. And in that book, it offered a solution a solution about mothers that love their children. Now, Rodoko Islam came after the Bible, but way before that we had the tree of life and Odin. So just talking about a time scale, brother, here we go. So the book of Kings, if you look, there was this King, his name was Solomon, extremely wise, put on the throne as a Jarl, had many wives, was very wise, many children. So he understood. And all the problems were brought to him and he would help create a judgment that would be fair and equitable to all. So one day, two women came to King Solomon and one of them said, your majesty, this woman and I live in the same household. Not too long ago, my baby was born at home and three days later, her baby was born at home. No one else was there with us. You see, they're going to court and there's a problem with these babies. And they're basically in civil court asking for a solution from King Solomon. They love their children more than anything, right? They're a package deal. If you were to see them on Tinder, my children come first. Single moms, huh? Okay. So here's the case. Nobody was there with us one night while we were all asleep. She, pointing to the other woman, rolled over on her baby and he died. 
Then while I was still asleep, she got up, took my son out of my bed and put him in her bed. Then she put the dead baby next to me. In the morning, when I got up to feed my son, I saw he was dead. But when I looked at him and I looked at him in the light, I knew it was not my son. No, the other woman shouted. He was your son. My baby is alive. No, the dead baby is yours, the first woman yelled. Mine is alive. And they argued back and forth in front of Solomon. Until finally, he said, both of you, be quiet. Both of you say, this live baby is yours. Therefore, assistance, bring me a sharp sword. A sword was brought to Solomon. And Solomon ordered, cut that baby in half. That way, each of you can have a part of him. Problem solved. Because they love that baby more than anything in their life. Please don't kill my son, the baby's mother screamed. Please don't kill my son, your majesty. I love him very much, but give him life. Give him to her. Just don't kill him. The other woman shouted, no, 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 cut him in half. Neither of us will have a baby. That's fair. That's fair. Aren't we all about fairness today? Equity? Hmm. Solomon stood up. He said, don't kill the baby. He pointed to the first woman and said, she is the real mother. Give the baby to her. And everyone in this place, Israel, was amazed when they heard how Solomon had made his decision. And they realized that God had given him wisdom to judge fairly. Thousands of years of wisdom. The woman who was the real mother loved that baby. So, knowing all this, knowing that single fathers present a much better environment for children to be raised in, children are in all regards better off with their fathers intact and part of their lives, which means living with them for protection, security, boundaries, and expectations makes children feel loved and that they have purpose. This is the best outcome for children. What the hell are you saying, Thor? What is this one change? Well, here it is. I'm going to throw it to you raw and everybody get ready. Hold your breath. Here we go. Here's the one change. In the Western world, in all cases, when the DNA test tests a biological father, primary custody is given to that father by default. Straight up. You can have 50-50, but primary, that's who they live with, goes to the father by default. This is easy to do. It's immediate and can happen right now. And you will see a change in society. We have evidence that goes back to the 1970s with the rise of single mothers, and you can see what has happened. This is an easy one to test. Easy. Easy one to test. Now, seems kind of extreme, doesn't it? But it's really not extreme at all. You know, oh, sure, let's make an exception for criminality and insanity. But so what? Bring it on, ladies. Here we go. Primary custody. Whether you're wet or not, DNA test comes back. Whether it's weaned or not, it's not really a problem. A lot of women don't even, you know, breastfeed and nowadays. It's not really a problem. Go for it. The man is going to get primary custody of that child. This solves a too many of society's problems. Let's use logic and rationale. Here we go. Think about it. It fixes all of you older single moms complaining about where all the good men are at. You don't have primary custody. You can go and party. And every man out there, if you keep yourself in shape, will look at you as if, hey, she doesn't have kids in tow. This is a possibility for a very good long-term relationship. Problem effing solved. There's your men. They're available to you. 
not really a problem. This solves your problem about being worried about getting pregnant. It puts it upon the man, which you've complained about. You've complained about this for decades. Well, he better strap up. It's up to him. Takes two to tango. I just reverse it. You have the baby. It goes to him. It's not a problem. We can do DNA tests in minutes now. So this should be pretty darn good. And you don't have to complain about it. You can get right back on that horse. And this is amazing for your career. Look at what your career holds. Look at all the promotion advancements. You can work more hours. You can spend more time on your education. You know, you complain about coming back from the office after a hard day's work. And, and here we go. Now I have to take care of children, fold laundry and cook. And I have to do a career too. No, 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 girls. This solution is the obvious solution. This solution fixes it all. So primary custody goes to the man. It's straight up, easy to understand, and it fixes it. So you can focus on being more of a boss babe. Lean into it. Why not? No more worries. You don't have to cook. You don't have to care for the kids anymore. It's truly a solution. They had this Netflix television series. It was called Sex Life. It was about this woman who used to just really be promiscuous, beautiful young thing. And she had these two children with the perfect man. Yet the whole drama that everybody's associating with, and it's so true, is she went back after the guy that really rocked her boat and became promiscuous again. And guess who was at home with the kids? It was the guy. So the solution is really simple, man. Turn it back over to the men. And if you're a man and you don't agree with this simple logic, well, then <laughs> if you don't agree with this simple logic, you just added yourself as a total irresponsible weakling that is wrapped up into nothing more than white knighting in hopes of getting scraps from these ladies. That's right. Bring it on. Let's have it. How can you argue with this? Men have better outcomes when they're single parents than single mothers on every level and have a higher success rate and they reestablish relationships with women that have much more success. Prove me wrong. I had a couple of guys, I have a couple examples where even men would sit here and tell me after hearing this solution, well, that sounds really good, but what the hell? You know, um, I was raised by a single mom. It worked out perfectly. That's just not right. You know, guys just are abusive and they misbehave. I have more than one story. And this one comes from me. Yes, it's corollary, but I'm going to tell it anyway. I was working with this lineman who was a total POS, drank all the time, chased women, was rude and obnoxious and got a divorce. The divorce affected him. It really did. He lost a lot. He got worse. Had three children. Okay. Unfortunately, the ex-wife, who was out looking for new husbands, late at night ended up being killed in a car crash. It's very sad. He ended up with full custody of those children. Some were rather young. What do you think he did? Did he continue being the asshole? Did he continue chasing things around? Was he completely rude and obnoxious and not the type of guy or might have been accused as an abuser or not worthy of being a parent? No flipping way. This guy stepped up to his burden of performance. Not only did he step up to his burden of performance, he took it all on in spades. You know why? That's how men are built. So don't give me that fucking bullshit. You hand him that baby and a man changes. That's his legacy. Why do men get so jealous that they will kill because of parentage? Why is it so repulsive for a man to get cucked? Why is it that fidelity is so important to a man to ensure his parentage? He'll do anything for that legacy above and beyond even just having one wife. No, 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 no. Those children are important to him. And it's because nature and the universe has designed it that way. Give 
custody to the men. If there is a divorce, if there is a single parentage situation, it's simple, simple as can be. DNA test, primary custody, hands down. Oh, I suppose that there would be an awful lot of psych psychotherapists that depend on the divorce system and child custody and all the accusations of domestic violence. You'd still get plenty of work. But if you just swapped it and did this, let's see what the data says in 10 years. Let's just see. So that's Thor swinging his meat hammer for today.